everything's for sale the album review is now public watch it boogie is an artist who'd been releasing music since the year 2014 who uh, I first became aware of when he released his single Oh My in 2015, which I thought was such a high energy, uh, extremely energetic song where he goes into detail about his environment. He also released a mixtape in that same year that I really didn't really follow up too much with because uh, after that one single, I kind of lost touch with what he was doing at the moment. And uh, I'm glad to see him back in 2019 releasing his first album under Shady Records, which I thought was even uh, more odd because I didn't expect him to be uh, linked up with a guy so far away from him regionally. Uh, maybe there are possible connections between that deal and Dr. Dre, but uh, for a time, I just didn't know that that was possible for him. I didn't even think that would have been a viable resource for him at the time. And due to the inclusion of Shady, we also have an Eminem feature on this album, which I will be getting to in just a moment. But what does this album have to offer, really? It's a lot of soothing, soft melodies, a lot of nice, smooth vocal harmonies, a lot of uh, very low key rapping, a lot of live instruments, uh, moments in the album that you feel really connected to the artist based off of the styles that they chose. Uh, there's no real generic trap production here. You're not getting uh, an extensive amount of bangers here, which going into the project, I was somewhat expecting a little bit. Uh, when people were telling me how great they felt this album was, I was expecting a little bit more fast paced, higher energy, but I really didn't get much of that, which I'm not too upset with uh, given Boogie's style and the things that he's released in the past. Boogie opens this album by letting people know that he's not about to deliver anything too conscious to the extent that uh, you're listening to this album that's trying to present an idea that the rapper himself isn't even prepared for. Kind of touching on how in a lot of instances that uh, want to deliver a concept bogs down the listening experience in its entirety and he doesn't want to do that really honing in on how this album is going to be a little bit more just introspective and about him he continues with that narrative on the second part of the first song reflections where he talks about how the only one he's truly at war with is himself silent ride is really one of the first indicators of me not being a big fan of boogie when it comes to his hook game because uh, a lot of this album being so smooth and low key and kind of uh, soft in its tone kind of makes the hooks deliver themselves in the same way to the point where when you get to it, there's nothing explosive happening with them. Not saying you need a hook to make a great song, but it kind of makes me look forward to the song a little bit more if the hook is something that I can look forward into. Uh, building up into something. It's not really a build up into it because it keeps the same smooth consistent pace for the entire duration of the track and Boogie singing isn't really that incredible. However, thematically it follows the end of the first track where he's talking about how he wants the aux cord past him and the female that he's riding with is talking about how she's not going to give it up because it's her vehicle. This is kind of one of the first indicators of this little theme in the album where uh, Boogie is talking about how you're not able to necessarily leave people that you love and you hate the fact that you love them, which is why you're unable to, you know, escape the relationship. He addresses it again on that track by saying how the things that she wants to say are implied through the songs that she listens to. However, just because this album is very smooth and subtle in its delivery, don't underestimate Boogie's pen because he's still delivering some gems here. One of the lines that I love the most from the intro track is how he talks about how I'm supposed to look to stunt when I don't feel my growth nearing. And I really like the way he delivers his lines on the second part of the interlude track, LOL, Shaking My Head, where it seems as though he goes from the shift of talking about himself to talking to his male audience, where he's talking about how he understands how they feel, you know that they need to be strong. He knows that in a lot of cases, you aren't allowed to say how you really feel about things because you don't know if it's going to be used against you later, especially when you're in a male dominated room. I mean, just look at the lyrics here. You ain't designed to be blind and lost in the night like you be. I know the hurt in your eyes. Oh my, you remind me of me. Shoulder shrugs, then show the world you give no fucks all day. Plus got a story I can never show you. Scarred if you open up, niggas just might have leverage on you. Yes, sometimes I need reminder. Remind me that I'm going to be. Remind me that I'm going to be straight. Remind me of my heart. Do break. Remind me that it's going reshape i just think the way he's delivering some of these lines is as though he's telling his male audience not to be so rigid in how they uh, perceive life and how they take things in and to understand that if you get hurt if something does happen you're gonna be okay and kind of saying that these defenses that you use to shield yourself from certain things that are happening 
aren't end all be all solutions to the bigger problem. It's only going to hurt you. I just like the way he's writing it. It just it, the way it's written is a lot more intricate than I think he's going to be given credit for. Then we get Boogie sharing even more of his experiences and dealing with Hollywood and dealing with the rap industry itself by uh, saying he doesn't like the process in getting to know other artists. He doesn't really like having to go through all these hoops and hurdles just to get little things done. And he also doesn't like the misconception that artists may have of him that they're best friends or bros simply because they did a song together or simply because they might be doing a verse. I think this, as far as the bass drops, work really well because Boogie's delivery is so strong on this track specifically. I also really love the uh, verse from Jid and the way he bridges the first transition. It's very mystic and it's a beautiful transition from Boogie's verse into Jid's. And I also love the end part of this song where uh, Boogie is talking about how uh, police brutality and his environment have shaped the way he feels right now. Not only from his own perspective, but from the perspective of people who are listening to this from the street, I'm assuming as well. Uh, people that are in positions where they're forced to defend themselves and they're in an environment where if they don't, they're going to be the ones in the grave. Talking about how his course is cursed, of course there's no remorse. He's seen his bros be turned to corpse. Just the writing sometimes is next level i'm telling you talking about how he's forced to see the police use force and still free in court and how black people the same shade as him won't back him up if he's in that position i just think the layers to this song make it so much better i just think overall this track ties not only his frustration with the rap industry but his frustration with police brutality his frustration with black unity or black togetherness his frustrations with his relationship i also really love the mac miller tribute that we get on the chorus of the track self-destruction and even though this beat in the chorus seem really ugly i think it fits so much well for the idea of being self-destructing the whole track in itself is kind of like being aware of you knowing that you're fucking up but still not wanting to really do anything major to fix it and those are really the major highlights on this album for me uh, i think boogie manages to deliver such rawness on this album where it feels really authentic and it doesn't feel like it's a force it does feel uh very genuine at the same time one of the issues that i do have with the project is how uh, unintentional boogie's uh kind of makeup is basically i feel like this album while it does contain elements that are specific to boogie uh there's nothing in it that is going to prevent it from being uh, compared to any other projects that have come out that have a similar vibe, that have a similar story. And I think that's where uh, I kind of lose interest in some of the slower paced tracks on here because they're easily reminiscent of, uh, you know, vibes of someone that you might get from a black or it's reminiscent of some of the same issues that I had when it came to Kaz's album, J. Cole's artist, Affected, that came out last year, uh, I believe March or April of 2018. These albums feature artists that are very talented but lack marketability because of their lack of unique attributes, I feel like. And when I say marketability, I just mean in the sense that you have something going for you that no one else does. I mean, we even have artists with lisps now, so you can't even say that that's unique to him. Boogie does deliver to me, though, what I've always wanted from artists like Chance the Rapper, just a less poppy, more serious vibe and aesthetic. One that isn't so churchy and you can do it and honestly my least favorite track on this project might really be the eminem feature where it's talking about rainy days i just feel like eminem again uses an opportunity not to make his artist you know appear as if they're the starlight on the track and i know eminem's job isn't to make anybody else look better but i feel like the subject matter for which he's talking is just so awkward also because he uses you know fucking sheep as a reference it just makes me lose hope in this dude's pen like yes he's an amazing lyricist but fuck man can you come up with something a little bit better a different metaphor please not sheep fucking please and his verse takes up so much of the song the other tracks on this album aren't necessarily bad and i feel like yeah, they're really going to be up for whatever your tastes are if you like jazzy more soothing more laid back music like we get on the track like uh nine live 95 uh, I think you'll probably enjoy it if you're a fan of that kind of music, uh, but if you're not, you probably just won't. But I don't think it's a bad track. I just think it kind of exists on the album instead of standing out or doing anything broad. And while that's okay, I mean, the album doesn't have to do more than whatever Boogie was trying to do. I just think listening to it and 
subsequently also listening to so many other projects, you kind of get a feel for the vibe and the layout for what a lot of artists are doing right now when it comes to this soothing, laid back kind of aesthetic to their music. I do think Boogie has some really nice songwriting, but some of the tracks just don't come together as well and make me want to come back to them for full listens. I would like it if Boogie, as opposed to just making tracks opposite of the Atlanta trap style production, uh, could also make some of these tracks just as explosive, just as memorable. Uh, with the vibe and aesthetic he's trying to go for with this album. Explosive doesn't necessarily mean banger, it just means something memorable. While I do think this album shows Boogie as more than just a rapper and especially a more versatile artist than a lot of what Shady Records has going on right now in their lineup, while he does make music that I feel is extremely relatable and can help people in positions that are similar to his own or people that are wanting to come up from their situation at the same time. I just don't know if it does enough instrumentally and I just can't see myself returning too often to this project knowing how much of a laid back kind of simplistic feel it has. While that may make the experience appear more genuine and more organic for a lot of other listeners, for me it just makes it seem very tame and uh, I won't say boring, but pretty flat line i guess while that may be the taste for some of the demographic that this album might currently be serving for me that just isn't the case the strong tracks on here are strong tracks and i will be returning to them so you have that boogie everything's for sale thank you for watching i'll see you on the next one let me know what tracks on this project were your favorite if you're a big fan of boogie and how long you've been listening to him uh, i still want to go back to some of his earlier mixtapes just to see what i can find and see if i can re-listen anything that i may have forgotten in this process uh maybe i can give myself a bigger point of reference in the future if he comes out with something new later on down the line but for now that's it thanks for watching and i'll see y'all next time i'm out peace